welcome to yet another Habits of video. I love doing these videos and you guys seem to like them as well. If you're new to this series of videos, I am not necessarily trying to give you the exact licks and the exact tone of our favorite guitar players. Instead, I'm trying to tease out the habits, parse out the wisdom that lies beyond the tone and the techniques and what is actually happening inside the mind of these great guitar players. What habits have they formed on the guitar? And most importantly, how can we take those habits and apply them to our own guitar playing without trying to be a lesser version of the guitar player that we happen to be talking about? Today, that's Buckethead. Buckethead is a really cool guitar player in all facets of the word. He has a lot of traditional rock and roll blues uh, influences in his guitar playing, but also, as you probably know if you've ever heard Buckethead play the guitar, a lot of weirdness and totally out there sounds. He is truly a master of his craft. He's an instantly recognizable guitar player, as are all the guitarists that I go into in these Habits videos. So let's talk about a few different things that I tried to emulate regarding Buckethead's habits in that opening jam. The first little nugget, which I think is probably my favorite adaptation from Buckethead's guitar playing into my own. I actually had to work on this for a while to get it up to speed, but it's this little motion and it relies on three note per string knowledge and it can apply to any mode, any scale, doesn't matter what it is as long as there's three notes on the B and E string or the G and B string, whatever two strings, they have to be adjacent strings technically uh, for at least what I'm going to show you. Once you've decided on the six notes you're going to implement into this pattern, you can move it anywhere across the guitar neck. I'm gonna show you a little Phrygian pattern starting on the A note of the B string, which is the 10th fret of the B string, and our three note per string Phrygian shape is 10, 11, 13, and then onto the E string, 10, 12, 13. So there's a lot of momentum that is required to get this up to speed. Slowed down, we start off with hammer-ons. And then we're gonna pull off without picking again. So that is the first half of the phrase. And again, this applies to any three note per string pattern. As you can see, it's always the same. So back to our 10th fret here. Now the second half of this little bucket head ism is going to go like this. So as you can see, this is the flick of the wrist that I'm talking about once we get up to speed. As you can see, my wrist is going very quickly and it looks flashy. It's actually not that difficult. The difficult part is combining these two so that it's one fluid motion. And once you have that technique down, you can work on speeding it up either in one position or going up three note per string patterns that exist in a scale, just straight out of this tonality. In this major scale context, I could use three note per string patterns all the way up the neck. Now, of course, I like to teach three note per string patterns. You can use cage system as well to learn mode positions and different breakdowns of scales. I just think that when it comes to improvising and playing with a lot of speed and using patterns like this, then it can be really beneficial to learn the three note per string patterns, which is something that I teach in Guitar Super System, my course linked down in the description. So 
With that in mind, the kind of approach to scales and modes and harmonic nature of Buckethead's guitar playing, he tends to stick in either a completely wonky sound like maybe the whole tone scale or a very traditional emotive sound like the Aeolian mode, which is the sixth mode of the major scale. Now, in that jam, again, going back to that, it was an Aeolian progression. So coming back to that sound, you can totally hear the emotion. <laughs> So if you want to write a Buckethead ballad, start with some nice natural minor sounds, throw in some minor pentatonic and aeolian mode, and of course a little bit of the whole tone scale can take you a long way. If you've never tried those positions out, I'm going to show you the aeolian mode and the whole tone scale starting from D. Now let's see if we can kind of throw those together and see what happens. Now of course, Buckethead is known for his wild antics on the fretboard and specifically his tapping. I've always been drawn to his tapping. He kind of almost sounds like a video game sometimes when he's doing his intervolic tapping that the intervals are drawn from the whole tone scale in my opinion. You can break it down in different ways like it could be a diminished sound, it could be an augmented sound, uh, but the whole tone scale I find is the easiest way to think of it, at least for myself. So out of a D minor sound <laughs> We have the whole tone scale. And with those, we have a lot of chromaticism. So what I like to do is actually find a position of, say, the pentatonic scale. And then also a position further up the neck with that same scale. So with those two things, we can start to create little tapping licks. But with that, we want to infuse a little bucket head tendency, some bucket head habits. So let's take a lot more chromatic approaches and we can actually simplify a lot of what's happening here to stick to maybe just one fret. Now you can phrase it any way you want to. I'm kind of taking the buckethead approach and being pretty random with it. Of course, he's a genius. He's probably doing a lot of what he does intentionally, but if I'm trying to kind of tease out his habits, I think the best way to start is to actually throw away all reason and just make noises on the guitar where your fingers land sometimes won't even matter. It'll still sound cool as long as you do it with a little bit of aggression and attitude. Now one more little bonus habit that is totally unique to Buckethead. I, I know probably other guitar players have done it too, but when I think of Buckethead, I think of a kill switch. I don't have a kill switch, but I do have a pickup selector switch, which sort of acts like the same thing as a kill switch. Instead of pressing in, I just uh, flick the switch. A lot of flicking of the wrist 
in Buckethead's guitar playing. So I have the uh, neck pickup turned all the way off, all the volume is off, and then on the bridge pickup, all my volume is on. So if I hammer on a note and kind of actively switch sort of like a tremolo or something, I'll get something like this. Now the key to this technique is to actually take a lot of care that no other strings are ringing out and also do a hammer on on whatever note you are trying to get to ring out. So there's a lot of technicality built into this little technique. It might seem simple, but in order to execute it correctly, you got to have a lot of uh, muting happening in particularly the fretting hand. So when I hammer on a note, you can just practice with the volume on. Notice how there's not a lot of string noise, but sometimes you might go like this. And there's noise like that. You want to get rid of that and kind of practice going like. You should be able to play scales like that without a whole bunch of string noise ringing out. And you want to have the switch off when you're moving between notes and on when you hammer the notes to get something like this. So there you have it friends, a little bit of insight into Buckethead's mad genius under that KFC helmet that he wears. Uh, it is something that I want to mention, recently Buckethead had a minor health scare regarding his heart and I can totally relate because I actually had open heart surgery when I was 18 years old. I had my pulmonary valve replaced with a bovine valve, so I'm actually part steer. No. Um, but anyways, I just wanted to say I kind of share Buckethead's pain and anguish when it comes to that type of cardiac uh, issue and I really wish him the best in his recovery. If he's still dealing with that, I'm sure it's not something that just goes away overnight. So continued health and success to you, Buckethead. If you ever see this, you are an inspiration to many guitar players and especially to me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little habits video on Buckethead's guitar playing. Leave me a comment on who you'd like to see broken down next in the habits series. And until next time, keep shredding.